You know, this morning when I woke up, I thought I wanted to have a threesome. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a three-way fountain pen shootout. And today, we'll be looking at three pens by the same brand. And that's pretty much the only thing they have in common. Um, I, I was asked, I'm just getting something out of the way here. I was asked to do a shootout between these three pens. Now, someone wants to buy one, and he wasn't sure which one. So, we have the Schaefer Agio Gold, the Schaefer Prelude, and the Schaefer 300. Um, you can get, I just have to check my note, that's why I just put something out of the way. Now, you can get the Agio Gold for about $105. Uh, shop around, you may get it a bit cheaper, that's the price I found online. Uh, it's not what I paid because it was the last model in the store, but this is the most expensive one in the list. And then we have the 300, which you can get for about 60 to 80 dollars, depends a little bit on the finish you choose. And then there's the Prelude, which can be the cheapest of the three, 45 uh, to 85 dollars, but there's also a, a 155 dollar version, which is, has gold trimmings, I think, uh, and there's the a Prelude Signature line, which I think is also more expensive, so there are a lot of versions of this pen. I got one of the cheaper versions, and I'm, I don't have any complaints. Okay, I have full reviews of these three pens on my channel, so if you want more detailed information about one, I suggest you, you, you uh, check out those reviews. Um, today I'll just talk briefly about all three of these pens. And I'll do a, uh, I'll show you how to take them apart, and I'll do a writing sample. And that's all let's do it. So, I'll start with the Agio Gold. Simple pen, nice pen, slim pen. Uh, this, I'm not sure whether it's... No, I don't think it's the smallest, although it's practically as large as the Prelude, but it's slimmer. So if you want a really slim pen, this is it. Slim design, tapered. I think it's brushed steel, looks quite nice, has a bit of texture to it, which you can't see like this, so that was completely useless, sorry. And um, you have the cap, it posts, again you see the sort of slim design, uh, a fairly slim section, pleasant to hold, gives you a decent grip. Um, this one has, I'm not sure whether the nib is gold plated, uh, it doesn't say so, it is gold colored, it's a very smooth nib, it seems to be, It's. I got it with medium in medium, it seems to be a little finer than the medium on my 300, at least that's the way it feels to me. Uh, it's also a somewhat more flexy, uh, well flexy is not the right word, it's somewhat more springy nib than that on the 300, I think. Okay, so we have this interesting section which has some, some texture to it. Um, the pen takes cartridges or converter, as do all three pens, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's nice that it has a metal barrel, it adds some, some weight to the pen, um, just fun. An interesting pen, looks a little, you know, classy, distinguished. The Prelude is the, 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 the second uh, pen that I'll, I'll talk about. It's a bit more rounded than the, the Agio, as you can see, that's a bit more angular, especially near the bottom, this is completely flat, this is more rounded off. Uh, sort of the same thing goes for the, the top of the cap. Um, just more angular and just more round. Uh, you get the the, the the clips, they're all nice, I mean there's nothing fancy about that. Uh, this, the Prelude, I would say is a simple pen. A metal body, metal cap, the plastic section, uh, simple, which has a nice bit of, of uh, sort of ergonomic stuff going on there for good grip. Um, simple pen, that's all I can say, but one that performs very well. I really love this pen. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about it. Now we have the largest, heaviest, biggest pen in this lineup, the 300. Now, I'm not kidding when I say it's it's bigger. It, it really is. See the difference? It's wider, it's taller, it's big, and this is a serious pen. This has some serious weight. With the cap alone, nice spring-loaded clip, um, but it's all metal. So this, this is really heavy, and when you pulse this pen, there's a lip near the end of the barrel, it clicks in place, and that's a good thing, because it's a heavy uh, heavy cap, it makes the pen top heavy. That's serious, I mean, it's difficult to, to convey this in a video, but it's it's a heavy pen. Um, I love it, it's big, uh, you, you, you can post it and have this, this huge monster in your hands, um, 
that's that's uh, very fascinating. Um, some people don't like the injection molded section, which which I mean, you get this nice metal barrel, metal cap, it all looks good, and then you have the, the plastic section. It's never really bothered me. I, I have to say, it's 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 decent enough. Takes a converter, as do the other two pens. Takes cartridges, as do the other two pens. Um, this one has a medium nib, and you know, big. So that's what you'll be getting with all of these pens. Um, I think that's. I mean, I don't want to repeat myself and redo the the reviews I did. You can check those out again if if you need more detailed information about any one pen or on the the details of the pen or whatever. I think the best thing I can do is just show you how to take them apart and then do a writing sample. So that's what we'll do next. Uh, I hope that was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Okay, so here we have them: Schaefer 300, Agio Gold, and the Prelude. Uh, I'm going to show you how to take them apart. Now that's the exact same process with all three pens, so I think I can just show it with one pen instead of doing it three times. You unscrew the barrel, you take out the uh, the converter. Now I've been unable to open up this converter and I think that if you try you'll find that it breaks. I could be wrong, but it, it looks kind of like a Waterman converter and I have the same thing there because it looks like this this metal thing is actually sort of molded in there or something, I don't know. I, I wouldn't, you, you can take two pairs of pliers and try to open this up, I think you'll, you'll just crack it, so I wouldn't do that. Um, <clears throat> now what you can do is take out the nib and the feet, they are friction fit, but the first time you do this it may be a little difficult. Um, you, can, you can try putting it in hot water first, not boiling water, just hot water. You can use a cloth or a, a, a tissue. Um, What's also very useful is what Richard Binder calls gripper squares. You can buy them from him, but you can buy them from, from a lot of shops. They're this type of um, rubbery things you put under carpet so that they don't slide. They give you a nice grip. You can try those. For now, I'll just do it like this because I've done it a few times with this pen. Um, <clears throat> this pen has one of the more interesting feeds I've seen. I mean, the nib is it's just a nib. Um, and it's pretty much the same on all three pens. I mean, this this nib has the same shape, except it's this one is gold. Uh, that is gold colored. It's not actually gold nib, as far as I know. Uh, okay, so then you have the feed, and you can take this part out. See that? Now that's a big channel, but you cannot use the uh, the feed like this. This long bit. It's at first I thought it was a breather tube or something, but it's not. It's actually something that goes into the back. I'm not sure why you can see that, but there's a type of a sort of nipple in there. And this thing slides into that. And that connects to either the cartridge or the converter. So you put that back in, and you can squeeze it back in there. And you see, I'm not sure whether you can see that under these lights and circumstances, but that the hole in there, in that nipple, is sort of closed off by this thing. Okay. Um, uh, the, the converter, you can only use Schaefer because of this flattened bit. It's the same thing with Schaefer cartridges, they have a very unique shape, and, and that's all there's to it. Okay. Now, I could, I, as I said, I could show you how to take all of these pens apart, but it's the exact same process, so I'm not going to do that three times, that would be wasting your time. Here you have a somewhat different section, but again, you can just take out the converter, you pull out the nib and the feed, and it's that same weird two-piece, uh, two, what do you call that, two-piece feed again. Uh, I guess that would uh, make you able to switch around the nibs and put this nib on the 300 or whatever you like. Um, one thing I would like to point out with the Agio Gold, if you take it apart, be careful you don't lose this ring. It comes off and it's one ring to rule them all, so you should be a little careful with that. I'll put this back in there, <clears throat> then I'll ink up the pens, and it's writing time. This is the way I want it to be, yes. Okay, there we go. I'll open up the prelude. The prelude, by the way, has this sick amount of threads. 
when you screw this barrel back in place, look how long this takes. There we go. Look how long that takes on this pen. Done. Small difference, but okay, who cares. The ink today is going to be Lindauer Blau. I don't really like using exotic inks uh, in, in uh, shootouts, but I'm running a little low on Waterman Florida Blue, so... I don't want to waste your time. You know, looking at me trying to squeeze the last bit of ink from the bottom of an inkwell or something, it's, it's not that pretty a sight. Okay. Three pens, all inked up. Close the bottle of ink. Ah, what have I got here? This is the 300. Good thing about this one is that the barrel is so heavy that you can sort of give it a twist and it'll screw itself in place. I believe I've never been so fortunate with the... No, Prelude doesn't really do that. Note how I haven't really wiped the grip sections. I enjoy living on the edge and getting my hands all inky. There we go. Add your gold. I'll grab some paper and uh, then I'll do a writing sample. See you in a second. Okay, so here we go. Today I will not be using my trusty notebook for the writing sample. Uh, instead I'll be using some Rhodia dot paper, just because it's larger and I have three pens to cover. Uh, I will start with the Ajo Gold. Let me just align this, there we go. Ajo Gold, Smooth Nib, um, I get almost no feedback from this pen. Uh, there are people who like that, there are people who don't. <coughs> Excuse me, all I'm saying is this is not a scratchy pen. It's, it's very pleasant to use. I'll move on to the 300. Much bigger, much heavier pen. <coughs> Also a medium nib, I should have added that, just for reference, this is, why did I write down F, I sh should have written down medium, sorry, sorry, it's early, the quick, This nib uh, gives me a little bit more feedback than the Ajo Gold. I wouldn't call it scratchy. It's just a little bit more feedback from the paper. Okay, and then finally, the Prelude. Now this is a pen I have in Broad. And that's a big nib. Very nice. Very smooth. Um, but but just big. Uh, under these lighting circumstances, I'm not sure how well you can see, but the, the tipping ball on this nib is really big. It's really big and round. Uh, the only pen I've seen that on that was so pronounced was the uh, Aurora Ypsilon in Broad. I really like it. It's it's if you like broad nibs, this is broad. It's that simple. Okay. Let's do some fast writing and see how the pens keep up with that. Looks good to me. 300. 
I'm, I'm not sure whether the camera picks it up, but the two pens make a different sound. I don't really see any skipping there. Jumps dog. I'll skip a bit there. Um, again, very pleasant. No scratchiness. This, I really love this this broad nib. Uh, and again, no skipping. So maybe we want to learn something about the wetness of these pens. I think the Lindauer ink can be a little on the dry side, but um, as you can see, the Adjo lays down a beautiful even patch of ink, quite wet. On Rhodia paper, a lot of pens are a bit wet because it's such a nice, high quality paper. Um, on copier paper, I, I'm not sure whether it will be this wet, that's all I'm saying. Here we have another nice even patch of ink. Again, very wet. And then finally, we have that monster among pens. Which is, of course, very wet. Okay, then I think the final thing we should see is line variation. You can get some line variation out of this. For some reason the word slut appeals to me as a good testing word for line variation. Some nice loops in there. Careful when you do this at home, you don't want to spring your nib, so don't exert too much pressure. To my, the way it feels, it's difficult to gauge from, from this, but the way it feels, I would say, this, the Agio opens up a little bit more easily under pressure, so it gives you a bit more line variation. I'm sure the, the actual, I mean, objective difference is, is quite small, but there is a subjective difference, the way it feels. Difficult to explain, I'm afraid. There we go, another fat line. I love this nib, I really love that nib. Okay, so there we have it. Um, three pens, three chafers. Uh, maybe it's just for, for just, I, I may just confirm what I already told you. This one I've seen online for about 105 bucks. I got it cheaper because it was one of the last models in a store, but you know, that's this seems to be a reasonable price. I'm sure you can find something cheaper. People can always dig up cheaper uh, pens, but still, I would say this one goes somewhere in the 60 to 80 dollar range. Maybe a little bit more expensive if you take some more expensive trimmings. Um, now you have the Prelude. This is not the uh, the, the preload, Prelude Signature series, which I think is a bit more expensive. I would say you could get this from 45 to 85 dollars, and then there's uh, you, you get some for 155, but those are gold. Those have some some gold trimmings, I think. So that's that's clearly more expensive. Um, this pen was in the cheaper range. Of the, I think the 45. I think I paid something like like 50 euros or something. I'm not absolutely sure, but something like that, affordable. So there we have it. Three pens. Which one is best? Well, that's really up to you. If you want class, I think this one is very good. If you want a big, heavy pen. I think the 300, I mean, look at that. That's a serious, serious pen. It's really heavy, it's big, it's just, I mean, serious pen. If you need that, get the 300. It comes with a free Spartan and one of those shields, if you uh, want them. 300. Um, and then we, uh, we have the Prelude. That's just a funny pen. You can take this with you anywhere. Um, simple pen, simple design, but that'll work too. So three different pens, I would say, for three different purposes. Um, 
all three they're quite nice and uh, that's all there's to it. I hope this was useful and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye.